Are you afraid that creating an evergreen sales funnel is gonna to be too salesy for your course business? If so, this video is for you. This video is a must watch before you ever go and try to create your own evergreen sales funnel to sell your courses year round on autopilot. Hi, I'm Mariah from MariahCause.com, where we help our clients launch their profitable online courses and then build the evergreen sales funnels to sell them year round consistently on autopilot. So today, in today's video, we are gonna be talking about your fear of being too salesy and how that is holding you back from actually offering your clients and your potential students the solutions that they need right when they need them most your fear of being too salesy is seriously not only hurting you and your business and holding you back, but it is seriously hurting your own potential customers because it means that they're not able to get the solution that you provide in your online course. So today's video, you are going to have a major breakthrough. You are going to be thinking about evergreen sales funnels in a totally different way than you ever have before. And trust me, if you have seen other evergreen sales funnels or other evergreen funnels done badly and you've been tempted to just write them off entirely as this does not work for me, this won't work for my business, please watch this video. You need to see what I'm about to share. Before you watch today's training, go register for my free masterclass where I actually demystify the entire process of actually building the evergreen sales funnel. So getting into all the details, talking about the tech and the emails and the webinars and all that kind of stuff. I get into all the details of the strategy, the exact same strategies and frameworks that we use with our paid clients. Um, so go register for that webinar because it gets into all the nitty gritty details. But first, you have to watch today's video gonna have a huge mindset breakthrough and it's going to make it so that you can actually go forward and build the evergreen course business that you know you wanna have. So another category of mindset issues or limiting beliefs that come up for people, especially around you know, creating an evergreen sales funnel is around selling and making sales, okay? So the sort of act of selling this, I cannot tell you how many people come to me and they're like, okay, I want to make a bunch of sales, but I don't wanna be salesy. I personally don't like the word salesy. It's not, obviously it's not the way that we do things, but I also don't think there's anything wrong with selling. Selling is serving, selling is amazing. It's a way for you to exchange, it's the only way for you to, tell people about your offers. It's just education, really. It's just teaching people about your offers and then being like, hey, if you like this, you can get it. If not, no, no big deal. Like You're not forcing anyone to buy anything. I think that's the biggest thing to remember going into this. If you are coming up against resistance in creating your evergreen funnel, I just always remind people, look, you're not forcing anyone to buy anything. You're just saying like, here's all the info you need to make a decision. Watch the video, check out the emails, look at the sales page. Here, here's all the info you need to make a decision. If you want to buy it, awesome. Cool. Can't wait to help you. If you don't, that's cool too. I hope you got a ton of value out of this. You know what I mean? Like no big deal. So you're not like pushing people or forcing people. You're just making sure that people have all the relevant information that they need in order to make a good decision for them and that they can self-select into saying I'm the right person for this course or I'm not. So I think that a lot of this fears that stop people when it comes to evergreen funnels in this category are around thinking that people are going to be mad at you for selling something or mad at you for making offers. I recently had a conversation with a client where she was like, you know, it was the day of her webinar and she was like, I think my audience is just going to be angry that, <laughs> that I'm selling something that costs money because she was so used to giving stuff away for free. And she's like, I just think they're going to be angry that I'm even putting a price tag on my work. And I was like, they are literally going to be thanking you for like making this course available, but you don't know until you see that happen. So of course, like three hours later, she posted in the group and was like, oh my gosh, I made all these sales. And like, everyone was so excited. No one was mad. <laughs> like That's the thing is I always wonder when people are like, oh, my audience is going to be mad at me if I sell to them. I'm like, 
what are they going to say? Like, is someone going to literally be like angry and like message you or something? And even if they do, that's one crazy person out of like all the other people who are just so grateful that you're making your work available to them in this format and in a really convenient way for them to do it on their own time. So, okay, this fear of people are going to be mad if I'm selling and making offers. So you might come up against this fear of selling while you are building your funnel. I would say the most common places it would come up would be when you're making your evergreen webinar. You might be like kind of holding back on the pitch. Um, it could affect the way that you that you are thinking about your webinar. Um, it could, it, it affects people's emails. It affects the energy that you create everything in, which is ultimately the most important thing. It stems from a feeling like that people are going to somehow be mad at you that you're offering them a solution to their problem. The way, I, the reason I phrase it like that is just so you can see that it's kind of silly, right? Like I'm not blaming you for having that thought. Um, so many people do. So many people think, People are going to be mad at me if I make them an offer. You're literally offering them a solution to their problem. You're not forcing them to buy it. You're not. You're just saying, hey, if you have this particular problem or you want this particular result, I can help you with that. Here it is. And you're allowing people to decide to make the trade of I'm going to invest in this so that I am have the skin in the game in order to take action on it. Right. That's all that is. Um, so it probably stems from a feeling of like people aren't going to like me. People are going to be mad. People are going to yell at me when none of those things are going to happen. <laughs> And if you do, like I said, one out of every thousand people maybe sends you a message or is like, I can't believe you're charging this much. It's like, that's one crazy person who doesn't get it. They're not your customer. We can forget about that person. This fear of selling is really just a form of self-sabotage. Um, this fear of people are going to be mad or people are going to say something or whatever. It's really just an excuse and it's self-sabotage. It's not real. No one's mad at you. No one's going to be mad at you. No one's angry that you charge money for your work, which is of so much value. And you're creating this equal exchange of value. So this is really just all in our heads. And that's what I mean when I was talking about my client who before she did her webinar, she was like so in her head about this. And she was like convinced that everyone was going to go like crazy when she pitched something that was for sale. And then after you're like, oh, that went perfectly great. And everything was fine. And that was that was great. I loved it. <laughs> so it's all in our head. It's not real. But here's the thing, and this is something you have to understand. If secretly in your heart, you like secretly hope that no one's going to buy your course, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> no one's going to buy your course. If any part of you secretly wishes like, oh, I don't, I hope that no one buys it because then people are going to be mad or blah, blah, blah then you're going to always struggle, right? Even if you have all the perfect scripts and the perfect, you know, template and blah, 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 you're still going to struggle because you're secretly, your energy is like, I don't really want anyone to buy this because like, what if they're mad, right? And so the way that this belief manifests itself in reality, like the way that this, I can kind of tell when this is happening, shows up for my clients in a couple ways. Some of the things would be like, you don't put calls to action in your email. So there's a spot in the emails where you're supposed to say like, click here to enroll in my course now, or I can't wait for you to enroll in the course, click here to register. And instead you like, don't put those in at all, <laughs> or you put them at the very bottom of your email. You're almost like hoping that no one sees it. You know what I mean? And it's all this like subconscious, like, oh, I feel weird about selling. So I don't even, I'm not even gonna put a link to my sales page in the email. Like I have seen this happen where I'm like, guys, you gotta put the calls to action in the emails or no one can get to the sales page. <laughs> like very important. Um, another way that this shows up is you kind of like hiding your invitation to enroll, whether that's in your webinar or on your webinar replay page, but kind of like downplaying it and being like, oh, you maybe enroll if you kind of maybe want to, I don't know, kind of being like that instead of being like, hey, if this is right for you, 
I want you to enroll. I would love to help you with this and being confident and standing, really standing up for your course and everything that you're able to help people with. Um, another way this shows up is becoming timid at the pitch of your webinar. Oh my gosh, I hear this all the time where like people's voices change and their like voice gets higher and they start, it's like they're teaching so powerfully during the teaching part of the webinar and then it gets the pitch and they somehow become this weird like sales robot. Um, and you can tell they're like anxious and nervous and don't feel super confident. That is going to kill your webinar. And it's so unnecessary because all you're doing in a pitch is just more, it's just more education, right? You're just educating your audience about what your course is about, what's included, what do they get? Why, who would it be right for and who would it not be right for? And why should they, you know, why should they get it? What's the benefit? You're just educating them about your product. So it's not like, you know, like I said, we're not like pushing people who aren't a good fit. We're not pushing them to buy it. We're helping them decide is this for you or is it not? And if it is, I want you to join. And if it's not, that's cool too. I hope you got value out of this, right? So I definitely think it's important to, to realize that when you have some of these beliefs about selling, you secret, like it's not even secretly, <laughs> you'll just, you'll self-sabotage in all these different places where you'll, you won't put in a strong call to action. You'll be kind of like, beating around the bush and tiptoeing around like just straight up asking for the sale and just telling people why they should buy your course and that's obviously going to hurt your funnel here's the thing you need to understand and I know that it's hard to imagine and you probably won't believe it until it happens for you but when it does you're going to be so happy and you're going to be like Mariah was right so here's the thing People will literally start thanking you for allowing them to watch your webinar on their schedule. People will be thanking you for putting your evergreen funnel up because they'll be like, thank you so much for making this webinar available on demand so I can watch it on my own time. It's so convenient. Thank you so much for making this training available to me. Like it's so generous of you because I don't want to have to wait three months till you do it live again. You know what I mean? Like people will literally start thanking you for your funnel and your webinar and that kind of stuff. People will start thanking you for the emails that you send them in your funnel because you're going to write them using the you know story based templates that we give you and it's all just telling great stories and people love reading them and engaging with them so you're going to be getting thanked for putting your funnel together and for making it available but not only that people are going to be thanking you for allowing them to purchase your course for making your solution and the support that they get in your course available to them when they need it and for making it easy for them to buy, okay? Your audience is just like begging you to make it easy for them to buy from you. <laughs> they don't wanna jump through hoops. They don't wanna search around for the link to the sales page. They don't wanna have to hunt around for it. They just want an easy way to buy their solution. And they're literally gonna say, hey, thank you so much for making this available to me. I'm so glad I don't have to wait six months till your next launch, okay? And I know it's hard to imagine people thanking you for making an offer for a paid product or for thanking you for making your, you know, your webinar and, and evergreen webinar and emails and stuff available, but it happens. <laughs> and when our clients start experiencing that, that's when you really start to understand that this is how you provide massive value to like infinite amounts of people at scale. OK, and no matter what happens, they're getting so much value out of this. So really important that you know that this is coming and this is what you can expect is people being grateful that you made your webinar available and that you made an offer that they cannot wait to purchase from you. Your audience loves you, right? They want more from you. So you have to give it to them. OK, ultimately, the sort of what I think is the cure for any fear of sales or selling or anything like that, any fear of selling or sales that you have it melts away and becomes completely a non-issue when you know how powerful your course is and you know how transformational the results are for your students. When you know on like a deep bone level, like when you know in your soul <laughs> how amazing the results are that your course gets for people and that your students experience when they're in your course, when you know that, and you have that deep level of confidence, then 
you're just like, I got to do whatever I got to do to get this in the hands of all the people who need it. Like all of a sudden it just becomes easy. The marketing becomes easy and all this fear of selling melts away because you're like, well, I'm not selling. I'm just here to help people. And this is what it costs. And I have to get this into the hands of the people who need it because it's so good (laughs) and I need more people to know about it. So that's what I mean is like when you if you ever are like have that fear of selling, I think at its core, it comes from thinking that people aren't going to love your course. So you need to fall in love with how amazing your course is. You need to fall in love with mostly the results that your course gets for your students, right? You need to fall in love with those results and how your students feel that transformation so that you feel excited to get it out to other people who need it too. And, you know, the sales part can become easy when you know how much people love it. And if you ever question that, go read your testimonials, right? And read your little love notes from your clients who are telling you that they love your course and then be reminded of how you need to get this out to more people, right? You need to make this available to more people. And just like I said, you're never forcing anyone to buy something. You're never saying, hey, this isn't a good fit for you. You should buy it anyway. (laughs) Of course not. You're just offering them a solution. You're saying, look, here's all the info that you need to make a decision. You can watch the webinar. You can read the emails. You can look at the sales page. Check out all that stuff. And if you want it, great. I'd love to help you. If not, cool. I hope that you got a ton of value out of this anyway. (laughs) Um, You know, I hope that you love the webinar, even if it's not the right product for you to buy right now. Um, And that's really the attitude that we have about this is like, well, we want to make sure that the people who need it have a chance to get it as easy and convenient as possible and everyone else can move on. So let's reframe and rewrite some of our beliefs around this that I see very commonly. If you have one that I don't cover here, I would love for you to bring it up and share it in the group. And, you know, again, ask how we can help you reframe it and rewrite it. So if you have a belief that I don't mention here, I always love to hear them and see how we can rewrite them. So the first one is... Nobody will buy if I'm not launching and teaching live, okay? No one's going to buy. This is very common if you've been used to living in the launch life cycle, if you've been used to only launching live and you're like, okay, I am used to doing this where everyone starts on the same day, whatever. So we need to rewrite this. And this is simply not true. And I'll just tell you from experience, a lot of people have this fear before they um, go into their evergreen, sort of evergreen their business. And then all my clients who come out the other side, they're like, oh yeah, those things are just not even an issue anymore. So understandable that you have this, this belief if you do. The rewrite of this belief is I have perfectly encapsulated all the best of what I do in a pre recorded automated format so that many more people can experience it in a more convenient way. Ooh, I love that one. This one's one of my favorite reframes <laughs> and rewrites. And I, I write this one out a lot because I love this idea of like, look, you, it's not about you launching live. The magic of what you do. Because I think a lot of people think that there's this like magical quality or this like special element and it has to happen live. The magic of what you do is not in the fact that you do it live. It's in your energy and we can actually perfectly encapsulate the best of you, your voice, your stories, your energy, the way you teach. We can capture all of those things and put them into a pre-recorded automated format so that just so many more people can experience it, not only so that more people can access it, but so that they can access it in a more convenient way for them. Because how inconvenient is it if you're like, oh, I only launched twice a year, so you can only, you can only get access to my, you know, magical live launch twice a year or once a year. I mean, that's not fair. You know what I mean? We want to make it available to everyone so they can experience all the best parts of you in this pre-recorded automated format and they're going to be so thrilled to experience this in such a convenient way for them where it's on demand and they can watch it when their kids are asleep or they can watch it early in the morning and they don't have to wait okay so it's not about you know everything that's made you successful it's not in the fact that you launched or taught live it's all things that we can take all the best parts of you and we can 
automate it and encapsulate it and capture it in these pre-recorded formats, okay? Whether that's with emails, automations, or webinar or anything like that. The next one is this kind of old tale that people in marketing talk about that's like, people need months to warm up and buy from me. I don't know who came up with this, but I know that it's not true. I know it's not true because of the experiments and the tests, the A-B testing and everything that me and my clients have done, but I actually was really fascinated by this. So I went out and I asked like all my business friends (laughs) and I was like, oh, do you know, you know, how, like, what's the amount of time that someone needs in order to buy from you? And more and more and more of my friends were saying that like 90% of their people who buy from them are buying from them in the first like week of finding out about them. And then after that, it can drop down. So it's very interesting that on one side of the fence, a lot of people say, oh, you got to warm people up. You've probably heard this. Oh, you got to warm people up for months and months before you do a launch. And they're only going to be ready to buy from you if they've been following you for six months or a year or something like that. But that is just not true. (laughs) I know that it's a popular thing that people talk about, but objectively, it's just not the case. So we can rewrite this and reframe this. And so the new thought is there are so many people who need this right now, today, and they don't want to wait to get the solution they need. So instead of thinking, well, you know, yeah, maybe some people are going to need a couple months to warm up to you. But actually, I would say the majority of like your audience, the majority of people who find you, they want the solution to their problem right away. They don't want to wait six months. They don't want to wait till your next launch. They want the solution that you offer in your course. They want it right now. Okay. They don't want to wait. They want it today. So people don't need months and months. That's a limiting belief. People are ready to buy your offer right within a few days of joining your list. Ooh, here's a good one. I love this one. So a lot of people come to me and they'll be like, countdown timers are weird. I don't know if I like them. My audience will be mad if I use a countdown timer on my sales page or whatever. Here's the thing. Your fear of countdown timers is seriously messing with you and it's holding you back so much. I'm going to explain to you. I'm getting a little overly excited. I just like slapped my desk. I'm going to explain to you how I feel about countdown timers and why they're my favorite thing because, well, there's so many reasons, (laughs) but here's the thing. Countdown timers are awesome. We're going to reframe this and I'll explain a little bit about why I feel this way. The reframe of this is the kindest thing I can do is to get someone out of decision purgatory and ask them to go with their gut to get off the fence. This one I love. So let me break this down a little bit. I truly, truly believe that the kindest thing we can do for people is just give them a container, a reasonable deadline, a reasonable container in which to make a decision. So we give them a reasonable amount of time in order. It's not a ridiculous amount of time. It's not too little. It's not too much, but just a reasonable amount of time to make the right decision for them. And for me, I know I'm a procrastinator. I think that 99% of people probably are procrastinators just by default. I wait till the last minute and I won't make a decision until I absolutely have to. I just know that about my personality. And I know that a lot of people are like that too. So (laughs) When I don't have a deadline for something, that decision purgatory, that sort of like, I don't know, should I decide one way or the other? Oh, I'll make that decision tomorrow. That sort of purgatory of indecision is more painful than just being like, yes or no. That indecision purgatory is the most painful place. I've actually been in that experience where I remember someone asked me to join a mastermind and I was like, cool, like when is the deadline? Like, when do I have to let you know? It was like a really big investment and there was like all these like live events and stuff. So I was like, I have to, you know, look at my calendar. I have to think about it. And I was like, well, I was like, when's the deadline to like decide? And they were like, oh, there isn't one. doesn't matter. Like you can just 
just come in whenever. And I was like, well, like, you know, is there like a time you want me to let, let you know? <laughs> and they were like, no. And so for months and months and months, they were like, hey, do you think you want to join? Like, no, you don't have to decide. And I was just like, I don't know. For me, it was the most painful experience because they wouldn't give me a deadline. And I was so annoyed by that. I was like, I need a decision. I need to make a decision because when someone gives you a little deadline um, it and they give you that container to make that decision within, it forces you to just like check in with your instincts and just do a gut check and be like, if I had to decide today, would I go with yes or no? And that's really all I'm saying is like, use your intuition, do a little gut check and go with your gut. If you think this is right for you, go for it. If not, no big deal. You know what I mean? But being on the fence is painful, right? No one wants to be sitting on the fence forever. That's that's painful. <laughs> so we need to give people the container to make decisions within and countdown timers are how we do that. And I truly know that from my perspective, using those countdown timers as like a little nudge is just such a great way to get people out of that decision purgatory and to get off the fence and just give them a reason to like do a little gut check. And the other thing I'll say is that I do love countdown timers because they are very visual and I'm a very visual person. And if I can't see visually how much time I have left to check out your offer um even if I'm like obsessed with your course and I know I want to buy it I'll still wait till the last minute so I need visual reminders because if all I see are text reminders that are like the the thing closes at Thursday at midnight I just doesn't it doesn't really register with my brain because I usually don't know what day it is. But if I see a countdown timer and it's visually showing me like, oh, I have another day to decide or I have two days, that's really helpful. I'm always really grateful when people have the countdown timers because it helps me just visually know how much time I have left. I love being given deadlines. Otherwise, I will never get anything done. And your audience wants deadlines too. They want a container to make a decision within. They want to get all the information they need. And then you're basically saying, look, you have all the information. You've seen the sales page. You've read the emails. You've been through the webinar. If you just do a gut check and you know it's right for you, great. I'd love to see you in the course. If not, that's cool too, right? So it's really important. And we've had so many clients come to us and be like, oh, I don't think I'm going to put a countdown timer on my replay or whatever. And I'm like, look, you are, and we need to get over it. And so many of our clients, they're like, I've said, they're in like spiritual niches or like, they're like artists or musicians. They're like, my audience doesn't like this. Or they're like in like yoga. And they're like, my audience doesn't like, doesn't like this kind of stuff. And I'm like, that's not really what's going on. It's that like you have this fear of it, right? And that fear is holding you back. They actually are going to be grateful for those little nudges and those little reminders. They're going to be grateful that you gave them a chance to make a decision instead of sitting on the fence forever and not having any reason to take action, right? We need to just nudge people to take action. Otherwise, we're all just natural procrastinators. <laughs> um, so yeah, and a lot of our clients, they'll be, they'll come into the program with a mindset issue around it. And then within two weeks, they're like, this is the best. I'm so glad I did this. Like, I feel so good about this. This is amazing. Especially when you see the way that we do it. It's like very, it's very good. So um, yeah, that's a good one. It's a big one. But definitely rewrite this, um, this, you know, mindset belief if you are experiencing that. The next one is people will be upset if I make an offer too soon. So I want you to rewrite this. You know, some people I've talked to are like, oh my gosh, like, is it weird that like someone can just buy something, you know, making an offer to them, you know, the day after they sign up for the webinar. And I'm like, no, this is great because in the rewrite, there are so many people who want to join my course now, they don't want to wait. And I'm telling you, people do not want to wait. I would say more than half of your customers, they don't want to wait. They want the solution now, okay? So it's really, really important that you give them what they need when they need it. The next one is my audience doesn't like being sold to. This I've heard a lot. <laughs> um, your audience doesn't not like being sold to. <laughs> it's possible that your audience has only experienced uh, not enjoyable ways of being sold to, whereas the way that we do everything is like fun and engaging and enjoyable. That's why we call it the enjoyable evergreen experience, because it's delightful and people love it and it provides a lot of value. So, you know, whether you buy or not. So 
here's the thing. I want you to reframe this as I am offering an incredible exchange of value with my course. I know it helps people and they need it. So instead of thinking, oh, my audience is going to be mad if I sell them. They don't like they don't like sales pitches. Look, you're offering amazing value in exchange for your course. That's what that's what this is. And you know that it's going to help them. You know that they need it. This is really just something that's happened. This belief is really just happening in your head. It's like not real at all. (laughs) Um, Or you've maybe tried sales tactics or marketing methods that you didn't love and you didn't feel confident about. So that was being reflected back to you from your audience. But honestly, your audience loves being sold to. They just want it to be in a way that feels good, right? Which is exactly what we do with the you know, enjoyable evergreen experience. That's what it's all about. Okay. So to sum it up, I need you to truly embody that selling is serving. I can't tell you how much I deeply believe this and live this because I know that when someone buys one of my programs, they have to buy it. They have to get, they have to exchange money for it. Otherwise they don't have the, you know, skin in the game to take action. That's, what's going to get them to take action. When they do, I know that they're going to do the work. They're going to get awesome results. So I know that the only way I can help them is if they spend the money to get the course. Otherwise, they're not going to be motivated to do it. So selling is serving. This is an equal exchange of value. I would say it's even it's equal, but it's weighted towards the value. All the value is going to the the customer, right? So much more value for what they get. It's like for the price that you charge, no matter what you charge for your course, for the price that you're charging, your customer is getting so much more value than what they're paying for. Um, It's a more than equal exchange. So that's really important to remember. Now, If any of these resonated with you or if you have a limiting belief around selling or anything like this, you know, marketing your course, getting more people into it, um, then I want you to write it down. What limiting belief are you committed to leaving behind today? Okay, which one of these really resonated with you? Which one do you need to reframe and rewrite? Do you have one that maybe I didn't go through that you need to leave behind so that you can move forward? Because the whole point of talking about this mind, like, look, I could have just given you all the templates for the, you know, evergreen engines. I could have just given you all the templates for everything. But and you could have just dove right into the content. But If you don't leave these behind, you're going to struggle moving forward. You're going to hit these little mindset roadblocks, these little speed bumps along the way. And we just want them to become like tiny speed bumps that we can roll right over and clear them and get them out of the way so that they don't stop us. Right. They don't need to become huge barriers in the middle of the road. So what limiting beliefs are you going to leave behind today? Write it down, draw a little arrow and then rewrite your new belief um, and share it with us. I hope that you loved today's training. I want you to let me know in the comments what was the biggest mindset breakthrough that you had or your biggest aha moment from today's video. And let me know in the comments what limiting belief are you committed to leaving behind today? And don't forget to sign up for my totally free masterclass where I get into all the details of how to actually set up that evergreen sales funnel so that you can automate your course sales and get consistent year round course sales without the feast and famine, without living in that launch to launch roller coaster. So go check out my free masterclass. It has all the details of how to actually set up your funnel, all about the tech and the different components of an evergreen sales funnel and how we do it very differently. So makes everything really simple. If you're overwhelmed by the idea of setting up an evergreen sales funnel to sell your course year round on autopilot, it's going to simplify everything. I hope you love today's video and I'll talk to you soon.